Hello, how's everybody doing? This is Mickey. Well, today's quick tip is going to be about a couple tools we use all the time, and that is our lens correction and our transform tool. Now, when you're looking at my Lightroom, you might see, say that uh, my Lightroom panels are not in this order. And that's because you, if you didn't know, you can change the order of these panels. All you have to do is right click on it, choose customize develop panel, drag any one of these tabs by the little hamburger bar here and move to the position that you want and that will change the order. If it's something you don't even want to see like you don't care about lens blur you hit this little checkbox and hit save and it makes it go away. All you have to do is right click on any tab bring back custom develop and click back on it to bring it back. Now I have to tell you if you do make any changes in order uh, and we'll do this. We'll bring uh, lens blur down to the bottom and hit save. As you can see, it is a launch will be required before you see the change in your Lightroom panel. So let's just relaunch later. All right, let's look at lens correction. Now, when we start lens correction, the first thing that we're going to really deal with is remove chromatic aberration. And chromatic aberration is a misalignment of colors, whether it's red, green, red, blue, uh, but there is a misalignment which puts a tinge or a green or red tinge around an area of high contrast. So let me just zoom right in here. So like I said, you're going to see this around an area of high contrast change and it's usually along the edges of your photograph, not so much in the center. So in this, this one you can see we have chromatic aberration in the blue green and kind of in the orange red black area in this area. Now just by clicking remove chromatic aberration will pretty much take care of 99% of the problem. It's really good in Lightroom and you really don't need to do much else than that. If you do have a substantial problem and the colors are kind of mixed, you can go into the manual mode and let's go back to profile and turn this chromatic aberration off and you can see it's back and go to the manual mode and you have all these sliders for the different colors of chromatic aberration. It, it can get real tricky uh, trying to find just the right one, but Lightroom again gives us a good tool, and that is this little eyedropper right here. If we grab this eyedropper, hover over, and click on the offending color, the, cr the cr chromatic aberration, it will take care of it and move these sliders appropriately. So as you can see, we still have this red uh, aberration in here. So if we click on this kind of maroon red, you can see that the sliders move automatically and it gets rid of it. And I have to be perfectly honest with you, I have never had to use this manual slider. The remove chromatic aberration checkbox seems to do it just fine every single time. But if you do run across something that is kind of difficult, you do have the ability to, to try to make that change and clean up manually. Next, we want to look at enable profile corrections. Now, what this does, it corrects the, or tries to correct whatever changes your specific lens will make to a photograph. Just like when you use a wide angle lens, you got to get that barrel distortion. Well, Lightroom's camera lens profiles can help you correct that. So the first thing you need to do is click on enable profile corrections. Now in this photograph, it didn't it didn't find the lens that I was using. The lens information is stored in the XF data of the photograph. So let me go and find, and, and we'll talk about this in a minute. What, what You can do something with this, but for now, we're going to go to another photograph where that is automatically found. So as you can see, when I go to this photograph, it has found the enable profile corrections and it has found the lens that was used. And in fact, if you look here at the very bottom, it says built-in lens profile applied. And that's because some camera manufacturers and lens manufacturers, they built in that XF data so that when you do launch Lightroom, Lightroom says, oh, I see what this lens is and we're going to apply it. All right, if we click on the little eye here, it'll, in fact, it'll give you the information. It said this is the camera, this was the lens, and this is what I did automatically.
All right, so that's what happens when we have enable profile corrections. It finds it automatically and puts everything in place. You still have manual control here at the bottom of distortion. If you have some type of barrel distortion that you want to further correct, you have this right here. And then vignetting, you can take away the vignetting that uh, might be applied to the lens because of the lens type that you were using. Uh, for me, I don't want any vignetting from the lens because if I crop, uh, it might make the vignetting look uneven and, and I don't want that. So I want to make sure it's neutralized as best as possible. Now, if we go to the manual under lenses, again, you have the vignetting uh, and midpoint, which you can change where the vignette hits. Uh, again, I don't like using that. I like to use my own vignetting tools to do that. So back to the profile. And this, like I said, this is what happens automatically if the lens profile has been stored in the XF data. Now let's go back to where it wasn't. So if it wasn't, you have the ability to go through all the profiles. If you know what your lens was and the camera that you were using, you can probably uh, find it in the lens profile list with Adobe. So. I know this is a Canon 24105, so I choose my Canon profile, and then I'm going to scroll till I find the lens that I was using. I was using the 24105 f4. As you can see, it applied the profile for me. Now I can turn this off, turn it back on, off and on. So a little barrel distortion got rid of some of the vignetting and then using the re remove chromatic aberration we get rid of that chromatic aberration around the edges of these buildings and the sky all right let's take a look at transform now let's change our photograph so we can give you a good example of a transform let's kind of go over the tool real quick off is just that turns all the features of the transform tool off Auto it tries to make a determination of horizontal and vertical. With a wide angle lens, not really doing a good job here. We'll turn that off. We'll skip guided for now and come back to it in just a second. Level, it will try to set the horizon perfectly level, which did a good job there. Vertical, it tries to set the proper orientation using the vertical lines in the photograph. And it did a fairly good job, but in doing so, you see we lose part of the canvas. So you just need to be careful when setting a vertical axis because you're going to have to crop in pretty tight or go into Photoshop and use uh, AI Expand to see if you can clean up some of that. We'll turn that off. Uh, full is a combination of uh, level and vertical. Again, we're losing some of our canvas because of the, the vertical changes we have to make due to using a very wide lens. All right, so let's turn this to off. And now let's talk about Guided. Guided allows us to place vertical and horizontal guidelines on the photograph to help Lightroom determine what the proper orientation of this photograph should be. To do that, we will either want to click on this guide, uh, line, uh, upright guideline icon or Guided here. We'll click Guided. And you can see uh, by default we have crosshairs with a loop view and this allows us to see up close the edges of the object that we're going to use to set our vertical or horizontal guidelines if the loop view kind of throws you you can turn it off down here by clicking this off and then all you have is your crosshairs and you can you know zoom in or zoom out to see exactly how much of the picture you 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 need to see to place your lines i like using the loop view so i'm going to turn that back on First thing I'm going to do to start the guided feature is I'm going to choose a horizontal line. I'm going to use the top of the roof here. And then I'm going to find a vertical line right here on the doorway. Now it takes a minimum of two lines for Lightroom to determine the proper orientation. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job. It could probably do a little better on the vertical because you can see that this is not perfectly up and right. But again, when you're shooting low with a wide angle lens, you gotta expect something like this. Now from this point, I think it's done a very good job. And this is where our sliders come into effect. So if I want to change the vertical and make it a little uh, more vertical correct, I can move my vertical slider till I get my vertical, as you can see my flagpole straight up and down. But in doing so, we start losing part of our canvas. The horizontal allows you to move the horizontal plane left and right. Rotate allows us to rotate the uh, canvas. Aspect widens or narrows, you know, kind of gives you a fat look. Now this one will probably come into effect when you have people involved. 
uh, in your photograph because they kind of get crunched down uh, when we start doing these aspect changes. And uh, by narrowing the aspect, you can make them look more natural. Scale brings it in or out. And you could use that to kind of crop in if you wanted to. Or you can just crop. X-axis moves it left and right. Y-axis moves it up and down. Now you have this button down here called Constrain Crop. And when you use this, Lightroom will automatically crop this as close as it can without displaying any of the white. So if we turn that on, we can constrain the crop. All right, I'm gonna hit Control Z to take that back. And if you want to turn off the upright, you can hold your Option key down and reset upright, right? And now we're just back to our vertical and horizontal slider controls that we can uh, manage the picture with. All right, just a couple tips and kind of some gotchas uh, when using this tool. If you use the constrained crop, it's going to, you know, crop it down the best way it can. By unchecking the constrained crop, will not get rid of it. You'll have to do a full reset with cropping or a shortcut is Control Z, Control Z twice, and it will take that constraint away to where uh, it was before you tried to constrain it. So I'm going to turn the constrained crop back on. And if you want to use a grid, to help you align this. There's a tool if you go up under view and use loop overlay grid. It will throw a grid on here to help you align this picture better. If you hold your command key or control key on a PC, hover over size, left mouse button down, drag left and right, you can change the size of your grid. If you hold a left mouse button down over opacity while holding the command or control key, you can drag left to right and change to how bright or dim you want those grid lines to be. Because if you're like me, I don't want to see them real bright. I just want them real faint to help me guide it a little better. One other tool that you have is a way to display an overlay, something like your, your signature, on the picture to see what it looks like based on the, the, uh, the transform that you used. And you go under view, loop overlay, choose layout image. Then you choose your uh, image for your signature. And of course it throws it on there kind of big. Hold your command key down and that brings up a bounding box that you then can change the size. Keep your command key holding it down and now you can drag it to exactly where you want. So based on what we did to transform, we now can look at and see what this is gonna look like uh, when we put our signature on there to make sure everything looks good or any other kind of overlay that you want to use. If you want to turn that off, go back to view, go to loop overlay, loop overlay and click on layout image and that takes it away. Well, I hope this helped out showing all the little things you can do with the transform and lens correction to get that picture in just the right orientation uh, and make it display just the way you wanted it to look. If anybody has any questions, please give me an email or give me a shout and I'll help you out any way I can. Until then, I'll see you soon.